Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I think it's fair to say that the GTX 1630 is one of, if not the weakest, graphics card to launch this year, so far anyway. It offers similar performance to the older 1050 Ti, sometimes 1050, and although I like the design of this card specifically, the 1630 as a whole doesn't make much sense to me. Hopefully the price of these will drop significantly in similar fashion to, well, everything else right now. In my original review I didn't touch on overclocking so I thought we'd cover that today to see if we can make this not so great card any better and if so by how much. The first thing I did was open up MSI Afterburner and set the core and memory clocks to match that of speeds I saw used in another palette card review. It was somewhere to start at least. The power limit is locked by the way so there was no changing that. My card didn't like this increase in memory clock speed one bit, and in game I noticed some graphical glitches and flickering, which was resolved by lowering the value by increments of 10, until I settled at plus 650. What I really wanted to do though was break the 2000 MHz barrier with the core clock, and although I wasn't able to get near this as a base speed for the card, my 190 MHz increase meant that in games, the card was now boosting above the previous 1845 MHz ceiling, all the way up to 2025 MHz. This was as high as I could go. Increasing the core clock anymore in Afterburner caused the drivers to reset. The screen would go blank and the speeds would default to factory. With the card now boosting to 2 GHz and beyond, and the fan still idling at 0% fan speed under low load, it was time to compare some frame rate results. Now I also noticed that the card didn't really get much warmer or noisier to be honest, which was a good sign as we weren't really sacrificing anything to get to this point. The footage you're seeing is from the overclocked 1630 results, but I've put up figures for both this and the stock experience. No side-by-sides today because the differences are hard to spot when just looking at the gameplay. That said, we were off to a good start in Cyberpunk 2077 with a whopping 3 FPS increase to the average and 1% low. The 0.1% low also increased by 2 frames per second so overall the experience was better. Not really a difference you could feel continuously, though there were one or two spots that definitely didn't seem to drop as hard. In Elden Ring, there was less of an improvement to the average figure and no change to the 0.1% low, but the 1% low was a handful of frames better with the overclocked card. Normally, I'd say this wouldn't be worth it for all the extra heat and noise, but there wasn't a concern with that here at all. A 2 FPS average increase is better than nothing, right? Even if it probably isn't noticeable while actually playing the game. That said, let's move on to Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, which I think offers some of the best results today. On average, Spider-Man gained an extra 5 FPS here with a decent improvement to the 1.1% lows as well. Walking through crowded areas felt ever so slightly smoother with the overclocked card, but you probably won't spend much time walking around in a game where swinging from building to building is where most of the fun is to be had. Regardless of the overclock, I think Spider-Man did okay on this card. The game did better than I thought with this entry level GPU even at stock speeds, but the increased boost clock brought with it a nice extra bump in performance that's for sure. Just like in Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2 displayed a fairly noticeable increase to the average frame rate. We went from 33 FPS with the stock speeds to 38 with the overclocked speeds, and this extra performance will come in handy, more so in busier town areas like Valentine here and Saint Denis, areas that can take more of a toll on graphics cards. The percentile lows saw improvements across the board as well. Now doing this obviously doesn't transform the 1630 into a gaming beast, it doesn't really bump it into a new category of capableness though, it is a free performance boost for the sake of changing a few numbers in a free piece of software. There's no excessive fan noise or heat to worry about here, and if you end up with one of these cards for whatever reason, know that it can be made a little bit better, but there we go. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't. Thank you very much for watching, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.